Hello, and welcome to using Shodan's web interface. This episode introduces filters, facets, and working with RDP. We have a good amount of content to get through, so let's just jump right into it with a high-level introduction to Shodan. Whereas most search engines focus on web services, the Shodan search engine is used to locate internet-connected devices. Indexes service banners for a wide variety of services far beyond just web, such as RDP, SMB, SSH, Telnet, and many more. I highly recommend reading the full story on Shodan's website. While you're there, sign up for a free account. That way you can follow along with me during the labs. To get started, we will take a look at facets, which provide aggregate information. We can see the facets located on the left panel, top cities, services, organizations, operating systems, and products. Facets are contextual, so they can change as new filters are applied. As an example, we're going to apply the filter for product NGINX, resulting in the facet changing from products to version numbers. Whereas facets represent summary views, filters provide detailed host views. This page represents only a portion of available filters. Don't worry about trying to memorize and interpret all available filters just yet. You will have plenty of time and opportunity to get comfortable with them during the labs. Now would be a good time to pause the video and print out the list of filters from the episode description panel. With your search bar cleared, go ahead and add filter for country United States and product NGINX. The country code will be two characters. In the case of the United States, we will use US, whereas product filters will be a text string. Shodan is updated regularly, so don't be surprised if your searches yield dramatically different results over time. Filtered hosts are located here in the center panel. Pick any of the hosts in the center panel and click on one of them. This page represents summarized portion of the host's general properties. We can see here and here that this host matches a filter for country US as well as product NGINX. You will also notice my host has additional products not covered by our filters. In this case, it's SSH. It's important to note that the host's general property page will contain all metadata, even if that data does not explicitly match a filter. For our final step in exercise, click on the raw data link. As you can see, raw data represents additional metadata beyond what is found on a general properties page. We can easily spend hours discussing raw data, but we need to punt that discussion for now to another episode. We've covered the basics of facets and understand that they provide a big picture data views. And we've also covered the basics of filters, that is to provide complete host specific views. Now let's expand on what we've discussed to RDP searches. Our first search will be a filter on port 339, which happens to be the default port for RDP. As you can see from the total results in the top left portion of the page, there are millions of potential RDP servers. Rather than trying to focus on the millions of systems, we're gonna work on getting the numbers down to a manageable size by applying additional filters. You might be thinking, Hey, wait a second. Are there really millions of RDP servers publicly available? Are there RDP servers that I'm not seeing? The short answer is yes, no, and maybe. How could there be three different answers for one question is simple. When using port filters by themselves, you are almost guaranteed your search results will contain bad or missing data. Some of those reasons for bad or missing data could be caused by port address translation, banner manipulation, honeypots, or one of my not so favorites, legacy practices. One of those legacy practices is security through obscurity, which I feel can be ineffective and dangerous. Why is it ineffective? Well, it's evolution. Discovery tools have come a long way over the years from rudimentary port scanners to advanced tools that are application aware and interactive making it trivial to locate services running over non-standard ports, which is known as security through obscurity. 
Then a danger aspect, such as creating a false sense of security while potentially undermining IS team's efforts to protect the edge. If you're worried about someone will find your servers on the internet, then don't put them out there. There are countless solutions available to enable secure remote access to internal systems. We will revisit security through obscurity a bit later on this episode. So we already have the filter for port 3389. Now let's try to get a little bit more focused. Please don't get tempted, as I just did, to click on United States facet link. Don't worry, nothing bad will happen if you do this. Clicking on a facet link is an easy way to apply filters, especially if you're not sure of the correct formatting. But to get the most out of Showdown, you should have a good understanding of the filter formatting. And in some cases, the facets shown might not be the ones you need. When ordering your network, you may find important data not in the masses, which is what facets are, but in the few. For now, avoid clicking on the facets. Okay, let's go ahead, add the filter for state. In this case, a two character code for California. Okay, and now one more level down, let's add the string filter for the city San Jose. This is super important to use a value that contains a space, such as the city of San Jose. You have to wrap the value in double quotes. From a data hierarchy perspective, the city filter does not represent the most specific geo. There are other options such as area code and postal codes that may provide more granularity. Oh, uh, before I forget, there's one last item we need to discuss for our earlier conversation on good and bad data. If, if port numbers were the pathological lying cousin, city filters would be the bipolar split personality narcissistic brother. Here's what I mean by that. So let's go ahead and clear the search bar except for port 3389. We're going to try the following searches, which should clarify my declaration. First, add the city of Washington. So city of Washington comes up with United Kingdom. Sure, that makes sense, I suppose. Let's get rid of United Kingdom by adding the following filter. We're going to do a minus um, and country and uh, Great Britain, so GB. The minus symbol will remove any host that is not associated with Great Britain. Before we waste too much time on the city filter, you should know there are 88 instances of cities named Washington. This is an example of good data in and bad data out. Our next search, city of Paris. The filter would be port 3389 and city Paris. There are three countries that have city called Paris. We all expect that just Paris, France. Well, that is except for those of us who thrived in geography classes. And the last one, let's do city of Manila which in this case happens to be located in a tropical state of Utah. I'm sure by now you get it. How you apply filters is critical to the accuracy of your data. At this point, we've covered enough of the basic caveats to somewhat move forward with RDP exercises. In step one, we'll get rid of as many non-RDP systems as possible. These methods are not completely foolproof, especially on their own. So for the first option, to reduce non-RDP systems will be to use the filter has screenshot equals true. The search data return will only contain systems that have screenshots available. This filter does not remove all non-RDP systems, but it does dramatically reduce the noise. We will need additional filters to remove services like VNC or X11. As you can see, screenshot data is represented both graphically and textually. Having the data in a graphic format makes it glaringly easy to notice the user accounts, while the textual representation hints that you can use filters on the user data, which, by the way, we will be doing shortly. Another filtering option which could obviate the need to use minus with product filters, remember for X11 and other uh, sort of stragglers out there, would be to add screenshot true with an RDP string, such as this one. So the port filter 3389 would stay, has screenshot true also, and then we'd add this data string. This combination gets you a long way towards finding most of the RDP systems running on port 3389 while removing 
a lot of the non-RDP noise. Okay, let's let's switch directions by looking for the port 339 diametrically opposed data, or as we like to know them as security through obscurity systems. We can start by excluding port 339 using the minus symbol in front of the port filter. The filter would be minus port 339 and has screenshot true. You will notice we have services with screenshot true, except those now on port 339, but we aren't done yet. The facets hint that we have other services beyond RDP, such as cameras. We have several options available to get rid of the non-RDP services. We could try minus port 339 minus product VNC comma X11, which would mean getting rid of VNC and X11 services. And we could also add has screenshot true with the data string for RDP. Or simpler, we could just put minus port 3389 has screenshot true and the data string for RDP. The simpler filter will remove anything running on port 3389 and match on has screenshot true and RDP string. The screenshot has true is optional. You might want to try doing it with minus screenshot true to see what systems are out there where the screenshot is not available. The last cleanup filter for this exercise is going to be port 339 minus has screenshot true as we talked about just earlier and add a text string remote desktop protocol. As you can see, there are many ways to search for RDP systems. Although we haven't achieved anywhere near 100%, the filters and data strings used in these exercises, nevertheless, will provide you a good foundation to get you started. As we're coming to the end of this episode, let's revisit the RDP user accounts that we talked about earlier in the episode. This is where imagination can provide interesting results. Here are a few to get you started. The first one is a no-brainer. Let's append the following text, administrator, to our last search. Okay, it's pretty good results. Now, the next obvious account to try would be guest. Let's put in guest into that filter. You can see that there are over 11,000 RDP systems with an account guest on them. How about we try billing or payroll? Or maybe how about inventory? Not too many results there. But you will see in our ICS episode, these small results can lead us down interesting auditing paths. Remember what I said, some of the best data will be found in a few rather than in many. And our last search, port 339 and this text string. This search will actually be our first search in our upcoming episode, non-English alphabet searches. Thank you for joining and really do appreciate it and look forward to seeing you again. Don't forget to subscribe so you will get notified when new episodes are added.